All right, everyone, welcome along. So, single pane of glass report. It's time we really actually started to look at it. Because the point that we've, what we're doing with this, we're building three distinct data sets with distinct things that have gone into them, okay? And from each one of them, we're gonna then say, well, actually, we wanna be able to surface something up for our senior leadership team or for somebody else, because that's the point, isn't it? That's what single pane of glass reporting actually means, that, that you can take each little area of your business and surface up elements to one place, okay? So it's not like, that we're not saying we're gonna bring everything together, although bear in mind, right, that should still be your goal, right? And I do still stand by that, that the goal of a, an enterprise analytics solution is to have everything in one model. That has to be the stated goal, okay? I'm not naive and I know that will never happen. And there would always be things that we could never bring into an enterprise-wide data model. So we could do a finance model, say, and there'll be elements that really couldn't go in there, like strategic element areas or things that potentially are even sensitive. You would definitely not even be able to say, well, we've got here's our enterprise-wide thing and here's all our HR data smashed into it as well. But we could do things like look at department or team payroll costs potentially. There's things that you could do to work out how you would bring that in. And the only way you have those conversations is if you say, well, we, we need to challenge, we need to bring it in. So there's, there's definitely some things that we need to get through and understand with that. But the idea of saying we're going to have one central data model is key, and then we want to be able to report on that. But if we're going to have five data models or 10 data models, they all need to come up, don't they, to our top level so that we can always see what's going on at, a, at, every, at every given point. So instead of having what most businesses will have today where you've got We've got a report from finance, we've got a report from HR, we've got a report from so-and-so. Key points of those might then be placed into a PowerPoint pack that then becomes, like, I don't know, 60, 70 pages long. Um, I've seen longer ones that you then discuss once a month, okay? <laughs> right? Mind blown by this concept, right? It, 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 but this is the reality for so many businesses. You are going to go through and say, well, instead of doing that, we're going in, we're going to put in enterprise analytics. So we would go and do this. We'll do a Power BI project, bring in Power BI, great. So Power BI will come in and they're going to fix the finance model and then they're going to fix the HR model and then they're going to fix the R&D model, right? So they, they build separate reports for all of these and then produce reports and then take the reports, put them in a PowerPoint and discuss them in board meeting again, right? This isn't right. This isn't the point, this isn't the purpose, this isn't what we're all here to do. This isn't ultimately what you're paid for. So let's go and have a look and see what we're suggesting that you do. Right, bearing in mind, I don't know much about this. I've only been doing this for far too long now. Um, and this is definitely the thing that we've seen that works really well when it's embraced by customers. But it's one of those ones that is always a hard sell. So let's think about it explain the whys for it, and we'll see what you think. So here we are, aren't we, right? This is our area in Power BI. Okay, so we've got Power BI. What I've done in preparation for this is I've created an app workspace. And to this, I've added already like a top level bikes report, okay? It's not big, it's not whiz bang, it's not intelligent, it's just kind of just a top level report, okay? We're gonna do more as we go through, but this is more about, there's a concept here that you need to kind of get your head around and go, right, I get it now, yeah, this makes sense, okay? So, <laughs> Very high level, nothing sense, nothing amazing in this. Okay, we've got kind of, I should probably put some tires on this. So we've got the yearly, how many bike hires we had each year, and then the current year's bike hire and last year's bike hire numbers, okay? I've written many measures on this. We're still really early on in phases with this. But I thought this make, this really spells it out what's going on, 
Okay, so we've got those numbers. So how do I do something like that? So if we go back to our workspace and I say, well, I want to create a new report. So I'm going to create a new report. And bear in mind, you can do all this in Power BI Desktop now, sorry, in Power BI Service now, rather than it all had to be in Power BI Desktop. And I've clicked on there to say, well, I want to create one based on a published, yeah, on a published semantic model, okay? Really simple. So we click on that and it'll bring up a list of, these are all the ones I've got access to. And this is why we recommend you come up with a plan for how you're going to certify data sets. So in the real world, this ideally should be using certified data sets. What I will do, and we'll probably certify these just so they appear here. You can see we've got some that I've built in the past in terms of our NYC Water 2.0, which is probably the one we're going to use for the water towers. Okay, And we've got the food hygiene report, which everyone's bored of by now. Okay, but these are certified. So for us, these be ones that we've taken extra rigor over. We've determined that these are the right ones. So this would be the ideal source for this. Again, this is data being shared where the insight is actually being done in a very structured and curated manner. For all, I'm able to just build stuff myself. So if I go back to the all, okay, and pick yellow taxis this time, which is the new one we've gone. I can choose to auto create a report or I can choose to create from a blank. I'm going to pick blank. Again, I think they're trying to help you. Oh, Copilot will help build the insights for you. Hey, no, Copilot probably won't. Anyway, I probably didn't say that on brand. Copilot's amazing. It's lovely. Please, Skynet, save me. So we've opened up, we've got a nice blank report window now, though. And obviously on the right hand side, I've got the options I can choose. So I'm just going to open this up and I can pick something from there, or I could say, well, I want to use the journey measures and we'll do something different, but I'm just going to pick journeys and I'm going to pick by year. Okay, so drag that. So we can see, here's the taxi journeys by that. Okay. And then for the sake of argument, just keep it all consistent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a card in journeys and that's going to have a journey count so just going to make that a card view and i'll say we're month drift sorry year drift even so how far back are we or forward is zero so this year that's interesting more bike hires than um taxis i, I did not expect to say that just but Okay, and this time we'll say whether the year drift is minus one. Okay, so that's last year. Minus one even, not zero one. Okay, 38. So we've actually now got to this point, haven't we? We say, right, built these two reports. They're basically the same. Yeah, I should have put more titles on, but I want you to kind of understand what's going on here. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Name of the report is going to be Taxi. Top level, same as I did with the bikes. Okay, boom. So I've now got this, these two reports here. Okay, and again, from just that perspective, I can click on the workspace. Great, I've got two reports. I can go, I can look at the two reports. I can say, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Okay, but that's still. That's two places I've got to go to, isn't it? But it's, I mean, I've surfed them up to one workspace. And we know that because if we went to the data model workspaces that we've got, so we can look at the taxi data model workspace. So if I look in here, right, and we look at the semantic model, this now comes through and tells you where is it being used. And we can see top level report is in somewhere else. Okay, now this is why I have a group strategy that we push and recommend to our clients. Right? Data models exist in one location. Engineering side happens downstream on that, and you might have a separate workspace for it, depending on what you do, or you might have your external data sources. That's fine. Date, that's one group of people. Data models is an, are a unique set because everybody needs to be able to do it. Some of your analysts will need access to it. Some of your engineers will need access to it. So it makes sense you, you put those in a separate location locked away from people. Because with this way of doing things, the thing that matters the most 
right? The thing that matters the most to you as a business is going to be, yeah, this. This semantic model is the core piece that you have to protect. As a, as a team, as a business, you look after those models because that's the core piece. People make changes to that, that can affect every downstream report that you've got. So we have to then protect those. And that's then where we look after our change management process. We make sure we've got governance over who can do it, who can make requests, who can, who's going to fund them. Is there a structured timescale for them? Because there should be. You know, obviously, if it's an emergency, somebody will do it. If it's one normally, you should be getting to the point where it's a quarterly or even six monthly or, dare I say, annual update cycle. In practice, what happens is you start when you first publish a semantic data model, you will do, oh, we've got to tweak it, tweak, 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 right? every you know, couple of days, every week. And then it becomes every month. Once it starts to become every month, it becomes every quarter. Then you can get every six months. And that, then suddenly you've got this structured, stable way of working. And from here, I've had clients where they've had well over 100 reports that are using the same semantic model. So that standardized model that we built, 100 plus reports going through it. That's an important number to think through, that how much insight is being derived from that model. Okay, as opposed to 100 plus people building Excel spreadsheets that say one thing today, and then, oh, we need to update them. Everything's looked after by the semantic model. It works now, it will work tomorrow, it will work next month. That's the key with this. So anyway, so we go here, we've got this beautiful thing telling us this is upstream, this is, oh, great, this backwards, isn't it? So Microsoft says downstream is report land. Okay, fair enough, upstream is rich. <sighs> My mistake, okay? But what we've got is we've got this lovely area we can now go through. Oh, that's a link. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to click on view it. And go through and we can see. Ah, uh, here we go. So this is one thing. So suddenly our insights are derived from something which is elsewhere. So we actually now are structuring this to build this into an area that we can then use. If I came through and I said, well, I actually want to bring everything together, then what I would do is I would say, well, let's create a dashboard. So the way, the easiest way you can create a dashboard is just pick some visuals. Pin the visual, pin it to a dashboard, and we'll call this Senior Leadership Dashboard, okay? So this will be kind of where we would send our senior leadership team to, right? Bear in mind, we'll just put one visual on there for now. Right? Over time, you'll find that you, you know, if, when you do these things, you'll have loads, we'll go to this. We're gonna do the same, not that one, that's from last year's, well, let's make sure we get the right one. Yep, it's gonna to go to the existing dashboard, senior leadership team, okay? So now if we have a look, oh, have a look at our dashboard, this is where we start to piece these things together. And this is where, this dashboard becomes your single pane of glass, right? Because I can say, well, let's add a tile, text box, next, apply that, right? We make that smaller, we might say, let's make it wider. Let's bring that down there, right? So we've got yellow taxi date, okay? I can then say, well, let's insert Another one, we go to edit, insert our title, regional city, okay? And apply that. Okay, and for all it's gonna lay it out in a particular way, there's nothing to stop me doing it. So one of the things we talk about is we say, well, these are, th these are areas that you can start to piece together and build up what you want to see. Um, make this pick, no, let's pick a, uh, Dark, okay, I don't know, is this? Pick dark, that might be better, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so we can start to see, we've laid out something that's gonna work for us and we can piece those together. I would typically say, design something, do an image, do something, you can put it on a website, you can put it in a public area, that you, there are all sorts of things you can do to make it then visible and available for you. If you do that and you place those on the top, just to again, make it nice. 
you then have this idea of verticality. So the way verticality, what do you remember that? Psychologically, or yeah, psychologically, the, the brain works top left to right, okay, and then down. So what we would typically say is we would say, well, let's build these in top left and down. So what we would say, or the recommendation I would give, would be make the top two top two tiers of your data section, as it were, be related to core things that are comparable. Okay, so in terms of this, we'd probably say like your top top tier rides um, or journeys versus rides versus um, distance covered. Maybe that might be something we can do. Look at the total distances. Those are top tier metrics that would be lovely to put in here. Then once you get below your top two, those would be specific areas of that tower. Okay. So at the moment, we're looking at the left-hand tower being, say, New York taxis. But that could well be our finance team. And what are their initiatives? You know, they've got our new ERP system implementation, um, you know, GL update cycle, um, something else. You know, all those things that you can be doing is a continual improvement for or other areas that are being specifically targeted by senior management, they can go there. And remember what we showed you before with our food hygiene stuff, you can be bringing in visuals from your scorecards into here as well. So everything can surface up to here. You can build scorecards that are from other disparate workspaces but are available to this senior leadership team or are locked in this senior leadership team's workspace and therefore shared up within their app space. You can do all of that and build that single pane of glass report, okay? So in practice, the way this works, all right, let's go. So if I look back here, we've got our senior leadership team. What we would then do is we'd go and say, let's create the app, pick the senior leadership team for it. Um, Senior leadership team app, okay. Put your custom contact information in if you need to, add the content. So we pick all three of these, but you might have in practice seven or eight, 10, 12. Let's put the, put that at the top. That's the top one we want. Everything else is below it. Add an audience say who it's going to be, what they can see. Right? This is why I'm not a big fan of audiences, because if you structure this right, I don't see the value add that you're getting from audiences for the vast majority of things. There will be exceptions. There's always exceptions, but it's one of them I'm not a huge fan. Okay. Pick our group, publish the app, and off it goes. Okay, so it was BGC. I'm going to pick the membership test group, which is one we got. I'm going to publish that. There we go, okay? App is published. So we can go to that app and we can now see. So for my app team or for my senior leadership team, all I'm telling them is one place to go. And everything is there for them now. There's no, you've got to go elsewhere. There's no, oh, we need five or six different links to it. It's one place, okay? One place. This is my senior leadership team. There is nothing stopping me from building these up and tiering these around whatever my structures are for my business, you know, it could be it's regional, so we could build a regional area. We might that might be uh, northeast, that might be southeast, northwest, you know, anything like that. We tailor what we need using this. So, what do you reckon then? Okay, understanding that this is a hierarchy is the challenge here, okay? That's the struggle that you are gonna face. That's the struggle that people try and get their head around this. Because traditionally, you think in terms of a single reporting solution. That's that's just the traditional way. Right? That's how it's done, okay? Where suddenly we're saying, well, we don't need to think about it in terms of a single reporting solution because we're gonna build lots of content based on the data solution, the semantic model that's being built for a process. So we have process, we have model. A model, in theory, could have multiple processes coming into model, yeah? So in terms of your retail, you might have 
you know, for, for retail, you might have shipping, fulfillment, the shop floor, um, procurement even, going, well, how do we actually procure what we're going to then sell? Uh, you know, there's going to be elements touching through into a like, HR side as well that you might want to be surfacing key elements of it. So in terms of what's the weekly wage bill for the shop, what's the weekly wage bill for this? It, these are things that you'd want to look at. And the key piece is that everything's easy to do individually. And it's just taking that final step and saying, right, we've built our use case one report pack. This is great that we've got here. How do we now envisage bringing in use case two? Because that's the whole point, isn't it? Whatever your use case one is when you first do Power BI, you've got to do your big thing. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Everyone goes, yeah, we're great. Big pats on the back. Oh, we're awesome. Yeah. Use case two is almost the more important one because that's about, well, how do you apply the lessons that you learned from use case one. And the lesson that's often missed is the one that you can't learn doing just use case one, which is the idea of saying, well, we're gonna actually have a hierarchical structure of report access groups and do it that way. It, it's one that you really have to think about. So, okay, yeah, you're right. We need to make these tweaks. Um, you know, Use the apps correctly, use different workspace strategies to determine who's in which group workspace. Make sure that you've got your support side in terms of who's the who your analytical support side. And this is why Microsoft recommends you have a center of excellence involved, because you want that analytical side that's going to create half the content, as it were, which is very structured. Okay, and I'm saying half because that's kind of the finger in the air side. The client I had who was doing hundreds of report pages on one semantic model. In terms of what the support structured side was, maybe 10 reports. So it was like 10 times that many were in unstructured land. If you structure and have a structured side, that makes life easy. And then you say, well, you can now do a little bit of ad hoc stuff if you need to, and you govern it, that's better. So Power BI has the governance that you've only got, you can only see the data sets you're allowed to see. You can tick boxes within there that allows you to see things that you can't see. Huh? So see what you can't see is where you can see a data set exists that says, say, uh, super secret finance report, shh, don't tell. Okay, but you wouldn't be able to see the content of it. You can see schema information, but you can't see content. So it would allow me to say, oh, yeah, I probably need access to this. Right? And I could then contact the owner and say, please, can you give me access because I need to do ABC? And they might go, oh, yeah, sure, or no, no. But it's, it, those are things you can do you get the point that everything can start to be built in a structured manner. And that's what single pane of glass is all about. It's about saying we've got one place that people go to get their insights. Okay? If we went and said, here's your dashboard, right? that could replace, <laughs> this is a bit of, what? That could replace that 60 page PowerPoint that you're producing every month. Okay? Maybe not that alone. We might say, well, we need to click on each of these headings as we go through it. And there might be a heading that we click on to go down to the next level, right, and see. And there you've got your text or other stuff going on. Or we could have looked and seen what the previous video we did where we talked about actually how we could build an app and do stuff in it and add comments in and then those can all surface up. There are so many things you can do. But we can piece everything together. We can make it all appear and we've then got one place everyone has to go to. And if it's a single pane of glass report, like a dashboard, we can tie all the visuals in that dashboard to say a previous reporting period. So we could have just, this is last month's dashboard view. We, we can see, we've got say last month, we've got this month, and off it goes. Each dashboard page works as, or each dashboard tile effectively works as a menu item. So you click on it and it takes you to that report page that links to it but you can link dashboards together. So you can have, these are the main ones, and you can click to say, well, take me to the exceptionals, and it will take you to more of a, an exceptional one. There's, there's fairly infinite what you can do with it, but you just need to decide, okay? We piece together the data sets that we need, and we surface up the insights into a single workspace, 
that everyone then that everyone who needs access to can be given access to. We can use Teams, we can use all sorts of things to actually say, well, this is who has access to it. Teams is great to use to get as an access giver or grantor because, well, we've, you know, we manage who's in Teams all the time. So we can start to piece together who can view, who can see everything. We can then use everything stock back or tracking back. It's great. Okay. As always, right? If you want to accept, continue the conversation, which I'm hoping you'll say, well, yeah, you know what you've you've you're right. This, there's a lot we need to kind of wrap my head around. You know, obviously add a comment. You know, get involved. Drop us an email, office at geordieconsulting.co.uk, and we'll get back in touch with you. And we'll take this further. For now, though, stay safe. Take care. Ta-da.